This is Dr. Frank Dane, Chair of Arts and Sciences Department. And what was your first research project? Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to talk about research because you know how much I hate to talk about research. So, um, my first research project was actually as an undergraduate student. I was taking a course in experimental child psychology and what we were supposed to do was in small teams come up with a research project that we would conduct during the semester. This happened to be a summer course so um, I immediately thought of something that we could do outside. Some of you may find that surprising about me but there was a time I liked to be outside and my advisor at the time had just finished his dissertation on stereotypes based on physical attractiveness and he had this set of photographs all of which had been rated uh, by University of Minnesota undergraduates for physical attractiveness so my idea on um, the rest of the team liked the idea was to try to replicate that using children because it was an experimental child psychology course uh, and also meant we could go out to the Milwaukee County Zoo and do the research out there. All we had to do was call children with their parents' permission over to look at these photographs and line up six of varying, so basically a, a, a mugshot kind of uh, six pack of uh, women of different attractiveness levels based on the undergraduates' ratings and ask the child which of these women would be most likely to help you if you were lost, which of these women would be most likely to let you um, share toys, and, and the questions that were child age appropriate, but same questions that the, uh, the undergraduate students were asked about the photographs in terms of stereotypes. Um, so what makes this an interesting first research project is that it was also my introduction into research ethics in a big way. Um, this was back in 1974, so it was before IRBs got involved in social and behavioral research, so we didn't have to get any of those approvals. But of course it was for a course, so we had to get uh, approval of the instructor. And so as I started offering these ideas, the professor, uh, Richard Passman, first of all said, well, I don't think you're going to get Dr. Dermer's permission. Dermer, Marshall Dermer was my advisor. I don't think you're going to get Dr. Dermer's permission to use his photographs. Well, of course I did. And then Dr. Passman said, well, I don't think you're going to get the zoo's permission to conduct this study on the zoo grounds. And we did. And then Dr. Passman said, I don't think you're going to get parents willing to let their kids answer your questions. And of course we did, and then Dr. Passman said, I don't think you're going to be able to analyze the results and get what you're expecting. And we did. So the short story about the research project is that it turned out quite well. And in fact, we did uh, replicate um, the uh, stereotypes that were measured by the undergraduates at the University of Minnesota. And it didn't matter how young the kids were, even at age five. Uh, we did five through nine or five through ten, somewhere in there. Uh, even the youngest kids shared the same stereotypes as the older kids, which were the same stereotypes as the Minnesota undergrads. So one of the things we demonstrated was that kids are picking up these stereotypes about physical attractiveness very early. So we wrote up the paper, wrote up the manuscript, uh, got, a, got a good grade on, on the manuscript, uh, and then started talking about sending it off for publication, which is the point at which Dr. Passman uh, sat me down and, and explained that it's typical that whenever research come out, comes out of someone's lab, that the, the lab manager, the owner, the main professor, the principal investigator, has his or her name on the manuscript. And since this was a course that he taught, it was really his lab, and so he should be on the author list. And um, it might have even been the first edition of the publication manual, the APA publication manual, but I had looked through it for a different course, and I had a feeling that wasn't correct, so I went to talk to other folks. And uh, 
And they said, yeah, that's not right. Um, especially because he kept saying, no, it won't work. He wasn't really helpful. He wasn't, didn't make a substantive contribution to the, to the manuscript at all. So I went back and said, no, it's not going to work. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Passman said, well, in that case, if you submit this, I will write a letter to the editor uh, and challenge the authorship of it, and then it will never get published. Uh, so it was never submitted for publication. Um, and years later, I, I ran into uh, the, the TA, the graduate TA for that course, uh, and she was, in fact, had become a psychologist and was president of the Society of Teaching of Psychology. Uh, met her in a con ran into her at a conference, and she explained that uh, Dr. Passman's nickname after that story got out in the department had changed, because of course I left and went out of graduate school. Uh, and so uh, Dr. Passman was not generally referred to as Dr. Passman anymore, nor was he referred to as Richard. Uh, he had a different nickname, uh, and I'll let you guess the results of that nickname. So that's the story of my first research project. Thanks.